Good morning. Welcome back to another edition of the Free Exchange of Ideas. I'm sorry it's been a week or so. Um, I got COVID, which sucked, but, you know, I just worked through it four or five days. I'm back to work. So, um, I just have a good constitution, I guess. But I, the first three days were pretty rough. I mean, I admit, uh, I have asthma. I am a diabetic. I'm old and I'm fat. That's four of the five mains, I guess. Um, <coughs> so I still have a little bit of a cough, but it's just junk in my lungs. Uh, I have a negative COVID test now, so good to go. Uh, I do want to apologize for not, you know, at least kicking something down in the meantime, but I really wasn't in a, a position to do that and, uh, like, didn't take a shower for the first three days I was in bed. And then, uh, y'all don't want to see that. That's just ugly. Not that I'm pretty to begin with, so. Anyway, uh, so Ukraine, uh, uh, Zelensky is asking for more, is asking for specifically Western fighter planes um, which are a whole lot more sophisticated than <coughs> than uh, the SUs that he's used to that his people are used to flying. Um, so that's probably a no go, at least for the United States. I think um, Denmark is going to send Griffins, which are really a great plane, uh, one of the best in the planet or on the planet. So that's a good plane for them to work with. It's not quite as sophisticated inside the cockpit as, say, a Talon or a, I'm sorry, not a Talon, a, a, a Falcon or, which is an F-16 or a, you know, F-15 Eagle, not as sophisticated as those inside the cockpit. Just as sophisticated, uh, fly-by-wire, great uh, guns, great uh, out, out pods to uh, carry weapon systems. Uh, but a little more straightforward in the in the cockpit, as I understand it. So that's a plus. Uh, Germany has uh, agreed to send Panzer II tanks, which is also a plus. Uh, and they've and they've uh, allowed Poland, I think, to send some of their Panzer II German Panzer II tanks to Ukraine. That's part of the German sales pitch. If you want them, you can have them, but you can't resell them. So they have to, Poland had to ask for permission uh, and Germany agreed. The, uh, I heard this morning that um, it looks like Putin's army might be able to make a break in the front lines against the Ukrainian people or the Ukrainian military and uh, could cause some serious uh repercussions in the war for Ukraine. But uh, it sounds like they're pretty much holding their own at this point. Uh, I'm really surprised because, like I said, Russia's bench is really deep. They have a lot of people that they can just kind of throw into the mix, whereas uh, uh, Ukraine doesn't. Now, the last numbers that I heard as far as losses are uh, Ukraine has lost about 100,000 uh, people in their military and uh, on the ground. Uh, Russia has lost 200,000. That sounds great because you think, well, that's a lot of people to lose. You don't want to just kind of blow your whole army up over this little piece of land. But you got to remember how deep their bench is. 200,000 people, I don't think that really comes into his thinking. It's not enough people for him to hesitate again. They're, they sent, uh, I want to say, I, I read or saw that they had sent 500 bombs over the last couple of days. Uh, did a lot of infrastructure damage. The uh, Iron Dome shield type system that Ukraine is using to ward those off uh, stopped a bunch of them, but not enough to, you know, really protect them. Uh, as you can hear, my voice is kind of rough, and I'm still sniffly, but we're we're doing well. So, uh, on the other side of this, 
that, that road's just full of gravel and I'm just going to have to climb out of it. No big deal. I'm used to it. Um, I think that's really all I got for you. The Ukraine thing was really heavy on my mind because it's a lot of people. I mean, you know, it's 300,000 people not counting um, uh, civilians. That's just military people on both sides. That's a lot of people and a lot of damage to Ukraine, to their infrastructure, to their uh, uh, downtown areas, to their uh, residential areas, residential buildings. I honestly believe at this point, NATO is going to have to step up and tell Putin to knock it off or, you know, suffer consequences that are not financially motivated. I think NATO has to step up and do that uh, because um, Ukraine is unable. That is not to say that they aren't a great fighting force. They have a lot of motivation, but they're just physically not on the level of Russia. And that's not their fault. There just was no reason for them to be on that level before. Um, but we can't, as, as a planet, we can't allow Putin and Russia to just run over a small country and say, yep, this is ours now. We can't allow that. Uh, there are war crimes. Um, when, when you fire rockets into apartment buildings, that's a war crime. Uh, that's not infrastructure. That's not military targets. That's, uh, you know, just trying to kill people in general. People, babies, hospitals. They blew up hospitals early. I don't know why nobody said anything about that. Not not just, oh, they blew up a hospital and that's just wrong. No. Don't do that again or we'll smoke your happy ass. That's what the answer has to be. And I think that's where we have to go. Unfortunately... Because Putin isn't afraid. He's not afraid because he doesn't think we'll do anything. He's almost positive we won't. Germany doesn't want to. They're taking oil from Russia now. Uh, or trying to still. Uh, that whole region is dependent on a lot of things that come out of Russia. So, the dance is still on. Let's see who steps into the breach. Alright, that's all I got for you guys. Live long, fight hard, win the day. See ya!